Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It is once again another brilliant day after a Chelsea victory. If you're still buzzing, smack a like on this video for me and we are creeping up towards 300,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure you do so. We've got two more matches to go in this Premier League season. Brighton away, Bournemouth at home. And then, of course, it becomes silly season. Transfer season. But I want to talk a little bit more in depth about the game that we saw last night. And for me, this is a coming-of-age win. It's a coming-of-age victory for Chelsea because even though we didn't play very well, we went to a stadium that was absolutely rocking because Luton were beaten earlier in the day yesterday. Forrest basically knew they were already surviving. And instead of them getting and taking their feet off the gas, I think it gave them a bit more freedom to play. And we also saw, tactically, Nuno did a pretty good job. He managed to somehow keep Noni Madweki out of the game. Ola Aina put in a really good performance as a left-back. And Mudrik, even though he scored a beautiful goal, and it's all thanks to the brilliant assist of Cole Palmer, still a really difficult finish. But then Mudrik kind of went missing again. Chelsea was struggling. We didn't really have that much natural width. And it looked as though we were just going to struggle and limp and hope that there was going to be an opening again. Forrest playing with that really annoying 5-4-1 formation that we have struggled against so often. Not just this season, but for a really long time now. But what Chelsea did, and I think we've got to give credit here specifically to Maurizio Pochettino again. Look, I think the substitutions... The timing of them was excellent. I think he looked at the game, and when Nottingham Forest score that goal from hudson Adoy, I think at that point, a lot of us were watching this game thinking, it's just going to be another one of those frustrating away days for Chelsea, where we just limp. We weren't quick, we weren't fast, there wasn't ideas out there. It looked as though we were just hoping for a moment from Cole Palmer. We were hoping that... Nicholas Jackson might get one chance and be able to score it, but it was the substitutions that Pochettino made, bringing on Sterling, bringing on Rhys James, Gusto and Kunku, the big hitters for Chelsea. It absolutely changed this game. And I think it's a coming-of-age win in the sense of when Chelsea aren't playing well or when we're behind, we just seem to lose our heads. So often this season, we go behind and then we're looking around, they're looking at each other, Frustration starts to kick in and we're waiting for a leader. We're, late, we're waiting for someone to step up, if not a moment of brilliance, from Cole Palmer, which it so often has been. And we had another one yesterday. Palmer got the man of the match, officially. I think the pass to Mudrick was sensational. The little touches, the flicks, drawing fouls. like He really does have absolutely everything. But it is those Pochettino substitutions that made all of the difference for Chelsea. Reese James, I spoke about him in, it wasn't really six things we learned, the video last night, because I didn't get the graphics in on time, but I wanted to get it uploaded ASAP, because I was just, the Reese James moment for me, like, just seeing him bring that ball out of the air, chesting it down as well, I'm like, that's our captain, he's back, and then the first time pass, you've got to give so much credit to Moises Caicedo, who plays such a brilliant ball, Reese just lets it come across. The, the speed of the ball is kind of taken off. So he's got full control of the cross. And Nicholas Jackson buries in the header. And that celebration, I think after we'd just seen Sterling get us back in the game, you're thinking, all right, come on then. We've got 10 minutes here. Let's give this a go. We've got all of the big hitters now on the pitch. We've got quality in abundance all over from defence, midfield, and now into the attack as well with the outlet of having Reese there. Gusto also so good going forward. I want to talk about that a little bit towards the end of this video. But it was the, the celebration says absolutely everything. Jackson is running over into the crowd. And I was speaking to some mates of mine that were at the game yesterday. They were saying it didn't really feel great in the away end. I think everyone was kind of on that high from two London Derby victories, and then it was like, ah, oh, we're back to square one again. We're putting in a shoddy average performance, and we're going to get beaten by a team that have been flirting with relegation all year. We've seen it happen before. And to go 3-2 up, literally two minutes after Sterling scores that fantastic equaliser, I think it was almost like the players were like, we're actually, we've got something here. 
And I think it is massive credit to Maurizio Pochettino for instigating that the way that he did. And we, we this is what we're getting good at now. We're getting good at looking at little parts and pockets of the game that need improving. And Pochettino is being bold and making substitutions at the right time. And if we bring it back to that pre-match press conference where obviously all of the talk was about Pochettino's comments where he was saying, well, everyone talks about them potentially sacking me and not wanting me here, but has anyone asked me what I want? Has anyone asked me what I feel? I'm under contract, but do I actually want to stay? Am I being given what I need to work with to get this team to where everybody believes they should be? And I think all Pochettino could have done after he lost my faith, when we got battered by Arsenal, I was like, look, I don't see any way back for this man. And then obviously he stayed. And as a Chelsea fan, I'm going to stick with it. And I'm obviously going to support the team. Whether I rate the manager in the dugout or not, I'm always going to want Chelsea to win. And since that moment at Arsenal, Pochettino individually is doing things that are changing the favours of Chelsea. And all of a sudden now, we're level on points with Newcastle. Newcastle go to Manchester United next week. This is massive. We could actually genuinely finish sixth, an FA Cup semi-final, a League Cup final, and this really wouldn't be a bad season at all. And I think you've got to give credit where it's due. And the reason that I'm so excited moving forward is that what we saw and the players that we had out there on the field, specifically uh, Sterling coming on and Kunku coming on in an attacking sense, Chelsea just had so much more quality. Madweki, I thought, was probably the worst player out there yesterday, but like he's been good recently, so I'm not just going to rinse him here. Mudrik, even though he scored, I think he was pretty ineffective, yet still important because he keeps the width on that left side. But him and Cucurella, as like a defensive pairing, it just doesn't work. So having Nkunku and Sterling come on, you can see the clear difference in the fluidity, the dynamic movement, and the quality of the finish from Sterling. And I think looking forward, we always we always remember Reese James bombing down the wing, putting in great crosses, arriving into the box, scoring great goals that we've seen on countless occasions from him also. I think there is definitely a world here where even though Mark Cucurella deserves all of the flowers that he's been given, for what he's done coming into that inverted left central midfield role when Chelsea are looking to attack. That's been brilliant, but Cucurella still defensively, I'm not entirely convinced. And I think with Malo Gusto and Reese James on the field at the end of that game yesterday, because they're just such great footballers, and the term ballers, like, these two absolutely deserve it. Reese James, when he's fit, if he can stay fit, he's the best right back in world football. Hands down, in my opinion. The man is a generational talent. Malo Gusto, I also think is a brilliant player. So whether it is Malo Gusto as the left back in moving forward, whether it's Pochettino or whoever it's going to be, there's there's got to be a way that both Gusto and Reese James play in the same side. And towards the end of that game, it looked as though we were kind of playing in like a 4-4-2 and you've got Gusto slightly more advanced than Reese. Is there a world where Malo Gusto is an option on the right-hand side. I know that we have literally uploaded videos this week talking about Estevão Willian, Kendry Pires, but these guys won't be able to join for next season. You've got Amari Hutchinson. You've got Angelo Gabriel. There is so much talent on the right-hand side. And just because Madweki had a bad game yesterday, I'm still excited about him. I think he's been really good. He's improved. And he's maturing. And I think what we're seeing right now from this Chelsea team is a lot of the young players coming of age. I think it's got to a point where this season has been so frustrating for everybody, the players included. I think Chelsea have been so unfortunate with these injuries. And I think what we saw in that second half, in the last 15 minutes specifically, when Nkunku's on, Gusto's on, Sterling is on, James is on. When these players are all fit, we have got a serious team. With Cole Palmer in there, 21 goals and 10 assists this season. It's mind-blowing just how great and phenomenal these numbers actually are. But I think overall, Chelsea will be absolutely delighted with the victory. I think we've got to learn how, yes, Stamford Bridge is becoming a fortress again. Yes, we're blowing teams away at Stamford Bridge at times. But it's been going to grounds where the atmospheres have been a bit... At, there's a lot of animosity there. And there's obviously a lot of buoyance for, New, for Nottingham Forest, who obviously just stayed up in the league, basically. We, we've struggled 
But to be able to win and not play well and find moments and times within the game where we can just absolutely turn it on and use the fact that we literally have quality players all over the field that are better than the opposition, I think players need confidence to be able to do that. Players need a couple of wins in a row. They need to see the manager speaking as though he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. I think Pochettino has gained some attitude recently, and I think the players are fully reciprocating it. I think what we've seen on the field since that Arsenal defeat, it would have been not a shock to me whatsoever if it looked as though the players had gone. They'd given up on the manager. We know that they really like the guy, and they're absolutely playing for him. And we're finding moments of brilliance out of nothing. I genuinely thought that game was lost when hudson Adoy put it in the back of the net, but we managed to pick it out. It's a great win for Chelsea. And I wanted to do a little extra video. I wasn't going to post anything today, but I thought, no, you know what? We're on a roll at the moment. Chelsea are on a roll. And it's been great seeing what you guys have to say. I'm, I'm loving the fact that people are getting annoyed that we keep changing our minds about backing the manager. But look, he keeps winning. And we, we're doing well. And his substitutions, he deserves credit. Credit where credit is due. Anyway, what a great week this has been. This coming week, we have got the final two games of the season. So as I said at the beginning, make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of the content moving forward. And if you could, smack a like on this video and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Come on, you blues.